More now on the airstrikes in Syria. I'm joined again by Arash Aramesh, the national security analyst. He's in New York for us. Uh, thanks for speaking to us again, Arash. Just uh, talk us through the significance of these airstrikes on Syria. Uh, these airstrikes are very important. For uh, many weeks now, uh, the president has been under pressure to take action against the Islamic State. Uh, a couple of American journalists have been beheaded. Uh, this uh, an, a French, a, a British journalist and a Brit British, uh, you know, hostage were killed by ISIS. Uh, this is in addition to thousands and thousands of innocent civilians who were killed by the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. So uh, the of this operation, this aerial campaign, is first and foremost to uh, weaken command and control posts in Syria. We're talking about the Raqqa province. The Raqqa province is pretty much the capital of the Islamic Caliphate or the Islamic State. And after that, they're going to hit uh, uh, U.S. forces and allied forces are going to target training facilities, logistical infrastructure, uh, things such as transport transportation routes and weapons and supply routes, but what most importantly, uh, it's command and control and then uh, training camps. This is going to significantly weaken ISIS. Hopefully, at, at, at that point, our allies or our assets in the region will move in to try to uh, deal one a final blow to ISIS the problem there is we don't want to uh, in we don't want to in turn become uh, Bashar al-Assad's air force in this ongoing civil war in Syria so it's a delicate balance to strike uh, but again as you said uh, fighter jets uh, bombers and uh, US uh, uh, naval vessels in the Persian Gulf and the Red Sea and perhaps some in the Mediterranean are now ready to take action some cruise missiles apparently have been fired against ISIS positions in the Raqqa province and this means that for the past week Weeks, U.S. forces and allied forces have been running reconnaissance and intelligence missions on the ground to get accurate uh, coordinates and locations for these potential targets. Not necessarily a surprise move, but nonetheless a, a controversial one. President Obama perhaps justifying the uh, legality of this action by judging the domestic mood in the United States, the fact that there is a largely, as you were just saying, support for strikes given the, the murder of U.S. citizens in recent weeks. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they'll go all the way and support him when it comes to putting boots on the ground. And you're absolutely right. The U.S. public is very war-weary uh, for the past uh, since 2011, for the past 2001, for the past 11 years, the U.S. has been involved in two wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, the U.S. public are not interested in yet another ground operation and yet another Middle Eastern Muslim country. Having said that, uh, the brutal murders of uh, Stephen Sotloff and the brutal uh, murders of, uh, of, of of another journalist in in uh, in, uh, in in uh, James Foley in Syria uh, really brought this brutality of the Islamic State back home. It really struck a chord, a nerve here with the American public. Again, in most uh, uh, opinion polls, the American public are not for a ground invasion or ground involvement in Syria, but they are more in favor of these sorts of strategic uh, and surgical airstrikes airstrikes against ISIS. Uh, the, and let's keep this in mind that uh, this is an election year. The midterm elections in the U.S. are a, in a couple of months, of months away. The first Tuesday of November is the midterm elections. The president is rather unpopular and his party is poised to lose even more seats in the Senate. So this can set up the president perhaps for some gains in the, in the midterm elections. Having said that, uh, the presidential season is going to start pretty soon. And uh, major candidates or potential candidates, such as Hillary Clinton on the Democratic side and Rand Paul on the Republican side, are going to heavily focus on foreign policy issues. So, yes, uh, the support for these for, for U.S. involvement in Syria and in Iraq was not really there. Uh, but again, after the murders of uh, uh, James Foley and uh, Stephen Sotloff, this legitimate this sort of uh, uh, support has come back. Uh, in addition to that, uh, and in terms of international law, our involvements in Iraq were completely justified. The Iraqi government requested U.S. intervention. On the Syrian side, uh, if we consider some of the actions of, uh, uh, of, of, of the Islamic State as desta so destabilizing that it requires an intervention, and we have the Arab League's approval, uh, we're going to have less international legal issues to deal with. The stated aim all along has been to destroy Islamic State and its infrastructure. Can airstrikes alone serve to sufficiently degrade IS? Uh, yes, they can certainly degrade the Islamic State, but they cannot completely destroy 
a large organization of this size, a, you know, a terrorist semi-state without ground forces. Now, since the president has been very clear that he's not going to commit conventional ground forces, it is highly likely that we're going to use special forces or we're going to heavily rely on our allies and our assets in the region, such as the Iraqi military in Iraq, the Kurdish Peshmergas in Iraq, or uh, the Syrian uh, opposition who is fighting in, in, in Syria or, and, and the Syrian opposition who is fighting uh, in, in northern Syria and eastern Syria. So that's one thing. Secondly, uh, you can't just degrade an entire semi-state by bombings alone. But uh, what's important is to realize that if the uh, Islamic State does collapse, if uh, just like the Taliban before them in Afghanistan, if these guys were to collapse, who's going to replace them? Is there going to be a vacuum in, in the Raqqa province or in Hasaki in eastern Syria? Or no, is there going to be a, a sort of a major advantage made for the Syrian government in the civil war? Or no, do we actually have a long-term plan for the future of Syria after the ISIS or ISIL is degraded and ultimately destroyed?